guys it's sophie and this is a big video so i'm gonna go through my top five favorite books in order um it actually wasn't that difficult to choose because i kind of keep in my head my favorite books there are a ton of books that i adore that aren't in this and I also haven't included any classics because I would rather have a top five classics as well. I think of them differently, I'd class them slightly differently. So these are my favourite sort of contemporary books. So coming in at number five, we actually have a book of poetry. And it is The Whole and Some of My Parts by Matt Harvey. This is an amazing little book. I completely just stumbled across it in Waterstones and they're so funny. Um, some of them are really short, some of them are really long, some of them ramble. But they're amazing. I'm going to find you one and read you one. Okay, so here's an example. This poem is called She Said to Him. She said to him, you're not the man I married, you've changed. She said, I hardly recognise the man who swept me off my feet and carried his young bride across the threshold. He was nice and kind and confident, a little brash. But what for me back then was the decider, he had a steady job. I was rash. I saw him principally as a provider. I knew what I desired, not what I needed. In life you're not recalled from a false start. You run the grace regardless, and that's what we did. I gave my hand before I gave my heart. She added then, before he got too worried, I love you far more than the man I married. They're just cute, they're amazing. If you like poetry, you like funny, silly poems, pick this one up, it's really good. Um, I've had many a happy hour just sitting and reading these ones over and over. And the next book, number four, that I want to talk to you about is Monsters of Men by Patrick Ness. I love the whole of the Chaos Walking trilogy, um, but this one made me feel things. Um, I finished this book sitting in the lounge of an airport and I threw the book away, I swore at it, I cried, I did, I didn't never want to see it again, I put it in my eye, I was like no, no, it's amazing. Um, the characters in this are incredible, lots of people do like it, this book um, and to be honest I don't even think it's that much of a children or YA book, I just think it's an amazing story. I have never read anything that makes me feel so into that world and I love, a lot of people say that about Harry Potter um, but for me this is a world that I felt so engrossed in and I was I was on the edge of my seat for these characters and I quite rarely feel that to that extent really I think as I read so much um, characters don't often sink in so much to me as to make that sort of personal connection but these characters are amazing moral ambiguity essentially in this series in two words and number three is a book that i've actually read quite recently i talked about it on my channel before but it deserves another mention it's surface rights by melissa hardy um this book is about a woman who has to go to this house that she doesn't really want to go to because her dad's dead and her sister's dead and she just has to deal with it and it's all a bit shit and this book for me is just the book with incredible characters um just really funny but really real and just it genuinely made me laugh out loud i was on a train and i was so bored and i so nearly gave this book away i'm so glad i didn't absolutely amazing book and i've never heard anyone else ever talk about it um i just plan on rereading it rereading it and rereading it and loving it every much every time and number two is a book that you've heard me to talk about before as well and that's night film by marissa pestle it's incredible um I don't want to. I don't even want to say that much about it. I've said. I've said my my dues to this book. I wish it was real. I wish that the that the story was real. I wish that the filmmaker was real. I wish I could be a Cordova fan in real life. That would be amazing to me. Um, it's a mystery, but it's also a book for people who love movies and who love movies that are hard to find. I've got her other book, Special Topics in Calamity Physics, and I want to read it so badly. <laughs> it it was just absolutely incredible, and I don't think I would have necessarily picked it up on my own, even though it is beautiful. But books you made me read this, and I would love to make more people read it. <laughs> I can barely even talk about it, it's really silly, I just love it that much. And my final book in this pile, my number one book, of all time and it has been for probably four years now um i'm just not reading anything that equals it for me is the house of leaves by mark z danielowski this is the only book that's changed the way that i read everything else this is the only book that has made me look at the way words are used formatting it's made me look at stories within stories it's so meta it's unreliable narration 
um, it's a mystery but you, you don't have that sense of it coming to something, it's just this is the way it is and it's mysterious and horrid and terrifying. This book really scared me and I, I read and I watch a fair amount of horror, um, I do go through phases but this really scared me and it scared me in a way that other books don't scare me because other books, a good example one I nearly chose was The Tommy Knockers by Stephen King. I love that book, I love the ideas behind it, I love the fact that she sort of uncovers this thing with you almost and that scared me because that felt alien and terrifying. This scares me because we all have that thing and whether you know you do or you're not, you have that place in your head that you don't know if it's real or not or whether you made it up or sometimes you might have a dream and there's a door that isn't there in reality and it's a book about opening those doors and seeing what's behind and trusting in what you're seeing, even if it doesn't make any sense. This changed my life. I <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It um, it changed the way I read. It changed the way that I think about the unreal text. It changes um, depending on what's happening. So here, when they're at the bottom of something, all the text is two. I want to read this book over and over and over again and if I could feel like one time I'd get it then maybe I'd put it down, maybe I wouldn't love it anymore. But I don't think I'll ever get it. I I don't think it will ever be a book that I don't love. I never want it to be a book I don't love. If you like the things I read, um, if you like creepy stuff, um, if you like being challenged by things as well, then you have to read this. You just, you, you have to read this book. You just, you have to. <laughs> so, I hope you really enjoyed this. Um, I know there were a lot of pauses, I know I stopped talking. It's not because I don't know what to say, it's because I don't know how to express the emotions that these things give me. I don't know how to impart you with the same senses and, and the same emotions that I had when I read these. Um, pick up all of them, read all of them, love them. If you have read any and you love them as much as I do, tell me. If you don't like them, tell me why, because it would be really interesting, because for me they're so wonderful that I can't help but love them and fangirl. Um, I hope you've had a good day, and I will see you soon. I don't know what I'm going to film next, so again, if you have any ideas for anything you want to see from me, put it down below and I'll be more than happy to do, to do that for you. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.